welcome back to another episode of the Valley to Peak Nutrition Podcast. This week is a little bit different. We have a story from a gentleman by the name of Tom McLaughlin, who is 77 years young and full of wisdom. Uh, He was a part of the Valley to Peak program for a while, and the episode is not really designed to talk about that and more of just to talk about Tom's personal journey and his experience with other programs, things that worked, things that didn't work, things that were tough about his journey, and just little nuggets of wisdom that he learned along the way. Uh, and, and, and other things too that I think you know most people forget about a nutrition program when they walk through it. Like there's a big difference between how you might look and what the scale says versus how you feel and uh, you know n- not necessarily feeling your age he's 77 years young but one thing he references he feels better now than he did whenever he was 40 so lots of great stuff in here and i appreciate him coming on very much lots of wisdom uh, if you have any questions or from the show or interest topics you want to hear reviewed, feel free to shoot me an email at info at v2pnutrition.com. You can always check out the social media pages on Instagram and Facebook, uh, as well as the different resources that are available on our website, which is v2pnutrition.com. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Join us Fridays on Instagram for the frequently asked question on Friday to get some of your questions answered. I love hearing from folks who listen. If you have any suggestions, like us, share us, rank us, tell your friends, uh, do all the things that you do with a podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Well, I appreciate that. And that's that's exactly why that's exactly why you're here is because you are a man of of wisdom. And like I said, I've just enjoyed every conversation that we've had. And every time that we've talked, I've thought, man, I just wish I would have recorded that for other people to hear because there's so much value in everything you say, whether it's about nutrition or hunting or life or whatever. But I guess before we get too deep and and take up each other's afternoon talking about all sorts of, of different life things, it, sort of fill everybody in. Who Who are you and what's some background? Who is Tom? Well, I'm uh, born and raised in Northern California. At my age, 77, I've been down, up and down a few roads, but one of them um, was this food issue for me, uh, among other things, but food became what I used to call my last battleground. Not too many years ago, I was, I thought it in that way. And so I, you know, I had got on a program where I did get my weight down from about 253. I'm 5'10". Um, kind of always been fairly stocky. Um, an outdoor guy, big time outdoor guy. And, uh, you know, I, just, and I was in a, I was a firefighter for 30 years, started out in life as a plumber. And uh, as I got older, even well, even when I was back in Vietnam, I struggled with weight trying to, you know, I was in my mid twenties then when I was in the service and I struggled with weight. I struggled with alcohol. I struggled with a lot of things. And, and so I just had to start eliminating things and I got it down to where it was just food, but it took a long time to get there. And I always thought, well, it's my blast battleground. And it dawned on me one day, not too long ago that no, it's not the food, it's you, Tom. You're your last battleground. It always has been. And several years ago, seven, eight, nine years ago, I'm not sure when it was now, um, my wife, Leilani, encouraged me to get on a program. I had tried other things, but get on a program that turned out to be a, a weight loss program, but it was pretty fast. It was probably 900 to 1,000 calories a day. It was... Um, what they call them, meal replacement bars and then a salad at night. I did that for quite a while. Went from 253 to 173, actually. And then everybody thought I was a little bit too light. So I got back up to like 180, 185. And then I was on my own. Well, being on my own wasn't working. And uh, so for seven or eight years or seven years for sure, it wasn't working. I was struggling all the time trying to stay on in that 185 range. And I just 
I just had a hard time with it and, and it would creep up and creep up and I would starve myself to get back. I would keep ordering meal replacement bars. Did that for a long time. Kept ordering these meal replacement bars that were not, they were expensive, but they weren't working, you know, because I wasn't making it work. To, it was all on me, but um, my appetite was always such that, you know, didn't take much to trigger uh, pulling into a hamburger joint and loading up. And all my friends did the same thing, you know, so I wasn't like by myself. I had encouragement, you know, let's stop and eat. Let's stop and eat. Yeah, you bet. And the struggle, the daily struggle was always there. And I started to, and I, I'll get a couple of photos for you here soon, but uh, I started getting over 200, 201, 202, and it just wasn't working. And I was miserable. And that was the thing. I might have looked okay, but I wasn't happy. And it kept going and kept going. And even at 205, 207, I looked fine. If you saw pictures, I have a couple pictures that I look at my other people's, well, you really look great, you know, and all this crap. And I'd say, well, to myself, I said, it's just, I'm miserable. And I started getting up while well, I was 212, 213, 214, about to go to 215. And, and I was listening just, and I always had a sign for myself every day. I still kept a food log, thank God. So I had developed a lot of really good habits. Um, and I was keeping a food log and I had a little note to myself that I saw all the time. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And the reason what I realize now is the don't quit part is that someday out of the clear blue, you're going to get an answer. I didn't know that at the time, but I started listening to a podcast on backcountry hunting and they had a, a, their podcast, um, has a great lineup where you can go through their like their um, library and they had one boxed out said nutrition so that really caught my attention so i clicked on it and it turned out to be a podcast with you i don't know who you are but i'm going to listen to this podcast because it had to do with something i was interested in that was hunting backcountry hunting even at my age was appealing to me this is just a what, not, a, not even a year ago. And I'm listening to that. It was about an hour plus long. And when I was all done, I listened to it again. I listened to it again. I listened to it again. And I thought, holy cow, that, that's that got to work for me. That that guy, he, he's on to something. So and that guy was you, belly to peak. And so I remember it was in June. I got a hold of you. And we started off with frustration because I didn't know how to deal with some of the technology. I was supposed to can't scan my agreement with you. How in the hell do you scan something? I don't know how to do all that stuff. It was frustrating. And you helped me. You helped me. Uh, we had to do some things kind of not through your normal way of doing things. We used, I think, Google Docs to do some things. And, and it was that, so it was frustrating in the beginning for me because of that. But I was, and you said, hey, why don't, you know, I was going to have you maybe start in the middle of July, but maybe we should put you off for a little while until you can get some things figured out on that end of it. I was determined. I said, no way, Kyle. We're, we're not just delaying this any more than we absolutely have to. So let me just stop you real quick, and, and we're going to come back to come back to this, right? Like where, where you and I met, I want to back up to a couple of things that you said. So number one was, even though you looked great, you said you felt terrible. And it's interesting me, it's interesting to me that you would distinguish the two, because I think that, you know, in, in the, the number of people that I've been so fortunate to work with, there's this, there's this, idea that if you look a certain way, which tends to be fit and lean and muscular and strong and all these other adjectives, everybody wants to be that those, those people that look that way, how they feel matches the quality of their physique. And that is a complete myth. 
what most people don't understand is if done incorrectly to get that sort of physique, number one, does not equate to good performance and good strength. It simply stops at looks for, for oftentimes. And yeah. second, it also, like you had, like you had referenced, it doesn't mean that person feels good. In fact, you know, and I'm going to sort of weave in my own story in this. The leanest I ever was, was whenever I, whenever I lost 140 pounds, that was the leanest I was mm -hmm. though. My weight was looked low on the scale. And though my physique looked, you know, a lot like what I'm describing in terms of my abs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I felt terrible. I mean, to the point of where I would pull up in my driveway at the end of a day and I would just lay my chair back in my car to sleep because yeah. I didn't have the energy to go inside. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a gigantic difference between those two. And it's interesting to me that you highlighted that curious question for you. What do you feel like it was that made being a part of that other program so challenging, right? I mean, you would think that you get, you know, you get these products shipped to your house, eat these, eat these bars, eat these products, eat a salad, you get the results. And it on paper, that's the way it looks. But what made it so challenging to stick to to where you kept bouncing, you know, from your lower weight of 185 to the 200s to having these cravings? Well, I think, let me think, let me think about that for a second, because they had a 12 week class every Tuesday. They had a, like an hour class and both Leilani and I would go to it. We went to it. You're going to maybe laugh, but we went to it for probably three to four years, every Tuesday, almost every Tuesday, almost like church. And they would go over the same stuff, the same stuff, the same stuff. But we were there just basically because we just plugged into it and, and then we realized, too, that maybe you could help other people, but the help part was limited. And um, after all that investment of time and effort and sticking to that program, um, it, it just wasn't working. I was putting on weight, even though I was going to the classes and eating the bars, but I was also eating hamburgers on top of it. There was no real direction. After you got to your goal weight, there was, you know, if I'm getting off track here, bring me back but it, it, you start to put the weight back on and I would ask one of the fellows I'd go to CrossFit they encouraged me to get involved in CrossFit way back then which I did and they were members and I would go to them and I'd say hey I'm this is my problem I'm struggling with this thing and you know I'm having the bars but I'm I'm not doing good I'm not doing you know I'm whatever weight I was at then and calorie intake I was at then they had no answers. Once they got to got you to your goal weight, they were done. Um, from my perspective, anyway, they couldn't answer my questions, and I needed a roadmap. I needed some um, some sort of a framework. And they say, "Well, there, yeah, go read so and so's book. You know, there, it's in there. It'll tell you." Well, it was just kind of more of the same, and really, at the really kind of hidden at the heart of it was keep buying those meal replacements. Keep buying those meal, meal replacements. And I, I said, no, I'm done with this. And so I'm, at that point, I'm out there on my own. I quit going to those classes. And I still see one of the guys. He's a great guy, but he's somewhat limited in his field. He's in a totally different field. He's not a nutritionist of any stretch of the imagination. He does work in the medical field, but... Um, like I say, it was, I was just out there in the ether, basically on my own. And it wasn't until I discovered you and that podcast that uh, kind of, and that was like, just, I stumbled into that. Uh, but that was part of my never quit, never quit attitude. You know, always keep an ear and an eye open for a solution. And, and that, it just rang so true that I thought, okay, I got, I got to, I can't just pass this one up. I got to find out more about this. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like what, what was it that I said in that podcast that stood out to you so much that sort of made you feel like, okay, I've, you know, I've gotten a piece of this puzzle under my belt. 
meaning, I mean, we can't discount the work that you did because, you know, you were at your heaviest, you were 253 and you'd managed to keep at least 50 of that off on your own. But you also felt like there was just this puzzle piece still missing. And I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of curious what it was. Cause I, I remember doing the podcast um, with Mark and Steve yeah. um, and it wasn't, at least in, in my mind, I'm like, man, I'm not, I don't know that I'm giving any like earth shattering information on here. So I'm curious, just c- curious, what was it a, that I said in there that stood out to you? Kind of in a nutshell. I mean, I, I saw myself, you know, going to one to 210, 230, 240, you know, and I just, and I was telling Leilani, I was telling myself, I said, I ain't do, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I've got to find a, a, a roadmap. And that's what I started to hear about in that podcast is, oh, this is about calories. This, this looks, this sounds, maybe I didn't use the term roadmap at the time, but this sound, this sounds like a, a way to manage, you know, it, it's got guidelines. It's got, it's got education behind it. Big, big thing, Kyle support. I think one of the things you talked about in the, for your program was that it had this support and I was going to learn about protein. I was going to learn about carbs and fat and calories. And, and a lot of times I'd hear, oh, you don't have to count calories here. You don't, you know, on different programs, no calorie counting. Like that was a bad thing, you know? Well, for me, when I started to uh, hear about that, it fit for me because I'm a numbers guy. I, you know, I like structure. Uh, almost everything I do, I, I want to, an education piece with it. If I'm going to do something that I love doing, or I'm seems like it's something I really want to do, I dig into the technical aspect. A lot of what I do requires a lot of technical reading. All of my interests uh, require a lot of technical reading and it's everything I do is hands-on, but um, pretty much, but I want to know the nitty gritty the foundation of, okay, well, how do you do that? And it, it, it isn't just what somebody tells me. I want to dig into it. And that your program seemed like it was eventually to me a roadmap. And that if you started to get off the track, like for instance, Hey, for you to uh, maintain, you need to eat a certain number of calories a day. They need to be quality calories, but here's the roadmap. You know, you have, you kind of have a benchmark or you have a goal. In my case right now, it's 2000 calories to maintain my weight. My, the, my goal weight is 185. And for me to maintain that, I need to be around 2000 calories. So where I was in a deficit, I eventually got down to 1700 calories and that got me to my goal weight. It took a while but I was happy to take the time that it was required to get there because it started to make sense that, Hey, we can't, we can't do what you did before. You can't lose all that weight in four months. Yeah. And I think, I think that that's uh, like a good, a good, a couple of great points that you've made there. And again, I just, I want to loop it back because you're saying so many good things. And I just feel like to add some context for people because there's so much wisdom in what you have to say that I, I, I don't want people to miss it. You see, so you had lost the weight, but a, a major driving force for you was you are passionate about being in the woods, right? You are passionate yeah. about hunting. You yeah. are passionate about really doing anything outdoors. So this wasn't really about, oh, I want a number on a scale. You no. wanted what you felt like that number provided you, which was a greater advantage to do the things that you love doing at the, at the rate that you love doing them in the back country. And here's what's key is that whether if I was at 200, 205 or, or 185, if a lot of times um, I'd get out to the desert to do something I really wanted to do, but I had, I didn't have the energy because I wasn't eating properly for one thing. And I'd get out there and I wouldn't unload the ATV because I didn't have the, I lost my enthusiasm. That's what part of a big part of what drove me to keep looking, to keep not quitting was that I wanted that enthusiasm. I wanted that energy. 
I didn't want to, at my age, be my age, I guess. You know, I, I wasn't ready to quit doing with a lot of my friends that I still talk to that I grew up with. We all rodeoed and hunted and fished and all that stuff. And they tell their stories. I talk to them regularly and I'm not where they're at. Thank God. Uh, right. And, and I mean, the, the, the scale movement, the excitement of that is only going to last so long. Right. Yeah. And so like one of the, one of the things that I think is so important, whether a person's involved with the program or making a run of this on their own is there's got to be something a little more that that's worth investing in beyond a certain number on a scale, right? Because that's only going to drive you so long. And so like, when I think of you, you didn't exercise to burn calories. You went and trained at CrossFit because it provided you greater mobility doing the things that you love. It wasn't about some sort of an obsession. And then the second thing of this is, this sort of this idea that counting calories is somehow obsessive or bad. And one of the ironies that I find with that, which that's not the only way to do it. It's, it's not the irony that I find in that is nowhere else in life. Do we call accountability for a goal and a purpose bad, right? And one of the greatest examples of this is in finance or investments or in um, saving for things. If there's if there's something we want, we put together a budget, we begin to set aside money for that budget. And we know that if we meet those month over month goals that we've set for that budget, the end result is given. It will happen. It's not a matter of if it happens yeah. or not. It's a matter of you know, getting to that, that end place. But for some reason, whenever we start talking about our nutrition, there's so much out there that says, well, you know, that's obsessive. That's absurd. I don't want to do that. And what you just highlighted is one of the values of doing that. You're able to see your weight be at a range that allows you to do the stuff in the woods that you love to do without compromising your strength or your energy or your enjoyment or in any of those things, you're able to still have good energy while seeing strides made towards your weight goals. And that is one of the values of knowing where you sit with nutrition, as opposed to, Oh, just go eat this bar, go eat that bar. And the weight will start to fall off. But like you've already highlighted, you may, it may fall off. You may even look great, but at the expense of feeling good, which ultimately then costs you enjoyment and the hobbies that you'd like. Right. And, and I would, I would venture to guess that most people would say that's not a swap they want to make. It's trying to stay sort of in the, on track in the middle of the road. And if I start to get off in the ditch, off into the mud, you know, I use that as an example because during the winter with our roads up here in the Rockies that are pretty nasty, and I'm out there, well, I, I got to go slow. I'm in four-wheel drive. I got to go slow. If I get, if I'm not paying attention, if I drop my rear tire into that ditch, I'm not getting out. Well, in the food issue it, with, for me with losing weight and staying there is that um, valley to peak nutrition helps me get out. It actually helps me from makes me pay attention because every day there's a lot of things that I'm doing the same. I'm developing habits that I log stuff either on the app that I use or on a binder that I have. There's other things that I track and, um, and I, I can see where I'm headed. I can look, you know, I can look at yesterday and see, okay, well, this is why you feel the way you do this morning, because look what you did yesterday. You got to get back you got to be more consistent with this or that. It's not hard. It's just that it's something I need to do so that I have that. And that's what do I want? I want enthusiasm. I'm 77 years old. I want to be doing this when I'm 97 years old. I, I remember being in Yellowstone doing some fishing years ago on the Madison. And I'm sitting on the bank enjoying a couple of old guys on the river watching them fish. And I asked this one guy, I said, how old is that guy over there? This is years ago. He said, oh, he's 84, 85. I said, you got to be kidding me. He's out in the middle of this river, and he's, he's a pro, you know, and he's, he's, he's doing this. I said, okay, that's the guy I want to be. But I, I, as time went on, 
uh, that's I was 250 then. You know, I was in that ballpark. Uh, my God, but you can get away with it. You know, when you're 40, you can get away with it. When you're 30, you can get away with it. You think because you're strong. I was strong as a bull and I was 60, 70 pounds overweight, strong as a bull. But I never felt when I was 40, I never felt like I feel today. Never. And I never had the enthusiasm. So for me, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Um, it's all about feeling good. It's if, if I felt good at two 30, I'd be at two 30, <laughs> you know, I love to eat. I, I think I told you one time if a 16 ounce ribeye is good. A 32 ounce has got to be great. Well, I just can't do that. And I would try, we, we were, we did competition eating in the firehouse and, uh, got me nowhere. It was fun at the time, you know, and all that kind of stuff, a bunch of guys, knuckleheads like I would, but it's, you know, you, you, you just lose your enthusiasm for doing stuff. I remember, I remember one of the things that you had mentioned to me on, along the same lines of enthusiasm, you said it in the context of, of your kids. And, you, you know, you said your kid, you said something to the effect of, you know, you, you may go spend quality time with your kids. You may take them in the woods or whatever, but if, 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 if you're not in it, they're going to be able to tell, right. If there's no enthusiasm. And, and yeah. one of the things that you kept, you, you sort of looped into that and you kept bringing it back to was just how much, in, how much you lacked enthusiasm and not in a way of like you were depressed or something like that. It was just r really, I guess we could use the term energy. You just didn't have that energy. And you said you felt like, you know, your kids could pick up on it. Even if you're present, it doesn't mean you're present, if that makes sense. Yeah. You just don't have the enthusiasm. You know, they want to, they want to throw the ball around. Okay. When is this going to be over? You want to get back to sitting on your butt, you know, and, and, uh, had I, I think I mentioned to you of way back when, if I had a, some of this figured out when I was 30 or 40 or whatever, I'd have been a better employee. I'd have been a better Tom uh, all the way around for everybody's benefit. And I just wasn't because I didn't have the energy or the enthusiasm. And, and I was selfish, you know, in the fact that I didn't want to do it. And maybe at the time I didn't even understand why I didn't want to do it, but I do now. I can look back now and I'm not saying that I'm perfect now. Um, you know, it's, there's still times when I don't want to do something, but that's human nature. I'm just saying that if you're sick and tired of being where you are, uh, for me, this was a way out. And for me, it's a way to finish my, you know, to go through the rest of my life. So aside from anything related to, to, to Valley to Peak itself, from, from a, strictly from a nutrition standpoint, what do you feel like was, and I know there were several just through the conversations we've had, but if you had to narrow it to one, the greatest epiphany that you had about nutrition as a whole? Well, I can, I can kind of sum it up in that what Valley to Peak gave me was a roadmap. And so what's included in the roadmap, I mean, if you... You know, that should be easy to understand that a roadmap gives you direction on getting from point A to point B. And there's a lot of twists and turns and whatever. But once you get that all figured out, you wind up where you're supposed to be. Well, that's on a daily basis. So every day I have a roadmap and I have because I've gotten to where I'm at, thanks to you. Now I'm at a point where I'm kind of, again, on my own, you might say but not really one of the big, I don't think there is one thing, Kyle, one of the big, big things for me about Valley to Peak was the support. That was the, the ability to contact you in more than one way, a phone call, a text, an email, you name it, a uh, postcard, whatever. I could get an answer. I could get direction. I could, you know, and I had, I had the, I was building that roadmap. Here's the number of calories. Here's how you do it. You use this particular app and you fo focus on your habits every day. You use the app to build your meal plan for the day. Like right now, I'm, I'm kind of on my own, although I know that there's support 
available to me, which there never was. There never was any real solid gold direction. And I know that I can contact you at any time and get support to say, hey, before I get off the beaten path, what am I doing here? And that's a big, big deal to me. And so I can look at and I started to understand about macros and what protein does and what fat does and what uh, carbs do and and uh, and why do we want to have a um, a calorie of a certain number, you know, whether it's 1,700 or 2,000, whoever the person is, or 4,000, that that's the number you live around. And in my case, I'm in the, a position to uh, live in a zone of, say, 1,700 to 2,000 calories. And if I start to get out of, if I start to notice and I, I still hit the scale every day. For me, the numbers matter. So I want to I want to hold myself accountable. And I to do that, I want a picture. I want a visualization that I can get on a scale and say, okay, you're two pounds over your goal weight. What is that? What I learned is that well, that could just be water. That because carbohydrates for every gram of carb carb, it soaks up four grams of water. So I don't get scared about the number on the scale. But if it starts to say, well, that's more than water, if the scale starts to tell me, hey, that looks like more than water, pal, then I have a, a mechanism to do something about it where before I, I didn't. I didn't have the support. Gosh, I think, you know, aside from the education, from all the, the layers of education that come with this, and it's simple, it, it's not complex, not really, not from my perspective. It might be from... Um, from your perspective as you developed your profession, that it was pretty complex for you to learn about it so that you could teach me in a simple way and that I could apply it to my life in a simple way. And that's what I do. Um, the, so that's the academic, the educational piece of this. The, p- the huge, big, big piece is support. I, I can't emphasize that enough. So if you're asking me what is the key thing to me, support so right now i'm trying to learn new things for a long time for several months i did the same thing every day every day and i got to my goal weight now i'm kind of branching out into other foods but the app gives me a tool that i can okay i can look that food up and say well that thing there's more fat in that than i thought or that that's supposed to be a cup well that's actually not a cup that's two cups you know whether it's let's say rice Um, just that's the educational part. And I'm starting to figure out how to do that. Something you had referenced a little bit ago and something we had conversation about, you know, several times in our time working together was the speed at which the weight came off. And, and, you know, for you and I, and this is the case of nearly everyone that I, I work with, it comes off much slower than what a lot of those fad diets um, or programs that involve meal replacement, et cetera, might um, advertise and, or you might see on that. Was it hard to see how much work you were investing each week and to see it not moving as fast as it may have moved whenever you were on, you know, the, the, the previous program where you were getting the meal replacements. But at first, I thought, okay, well, that's, yeah, that's going to take a while. So you start to maybe, maybe you start to resist a little bit if this is, you know, you kind of want to get it off. And I, I didn't have a whole lot to get off. I didn't have 70 pounds to get off. I didn't have, I don't know, where was I, 215, 214, and I wanted to get to one eight back to 185. I thought, okay, that's a good number for me. And so, okay, that's that much weight. I want to get that off. That should be easy. That should be, didn't take long to get that off. And so when we first started, and I said, oh, this is going to take a while. But then I started through the education of it, the regular education, the daily, weekly, monthly education of what calories are, what they do, and why, and why we want to lose um, one and one to two pounds a week. The why behind that, the education. Okay, that finally that started to say, okay, this is the way to go. Yeah, I was in a hurry to begin with, but then I started to realize, no, we we need to slow down. This guy is right. He knows what he's talking about. I believed you. That I, you know, that's what it. I believed you. 
and I trusted you. I became, I be, began to really trust what you had to say about all of it. And I get back to the support of it, that support, the habit building, the consistency, the tracking, all of that mattered. But I don't think it mattered if all of that together, together as an aggregate, probably what mattered even more so was the support, the education, and starting to put the pieces together and accepting that, okay, this is what it's going to take. Because it's not so much to get to the goal weight. Yeah, we want to get to the goal weight and feel good and all that kind of stuff. This is about the rest of my life. Yeah. And and it's, uh, you know, like doing all of the things that you had just mentioned, the tracking and the sort of the legwork behind it is not, I think when people commit to, you know, commit to something like that, they're apprehensive at first because they don't want to be married to that forever. But that's not the idea, right? The idea is not to be married to it forever. The idea is that we use it like a tool to get mm-hmm. what we want and to keep us accountable and keep it and teach us about nutrition. But, you know, the, the end result of that is through the, the utilization of those tools, it's teaching you about nutrition so that whenever you get, whenever you arrive at the goal you can choose whether or not you want to keep using those tools, but one thing you don't have to choose is whether or not you maintain and keep the progress that you've, you've made. And I mean, that is what is so impressive about you. When I think of you is you like a sponge just absorbed every conversation that we had. And it was, I mean, just truly my pleasure to be able to walk with you through that. And I mean, I, you know, I gave you a little bit of advice, but at the end of the day, you did the work and that's the hard part. Right. And, and just because something simple doesn't mean that it's easy. And you were just so diligent and so consistent and so hungry to really make this your final stop in terms of learning about nutrition, um, that it was, it was just truly my joy to be able to work with you. And so I, I, I just want you to know that, that I appreciate you and I'm impressed with everything that you did. And, um, though I miss you, <laughs> uh, there's nothing that thrills me more than someone being able to say, you know what, I don't think I need you anymore because I understand nutrition so well. That's my end goal, right. To the point of where you can say sayonara, I don't, I don't know that I need you anymore. Well, that was surprising that because you let that be known right away, right up front, that there's going to come a day when you are on your own, but I'll still be here, but you're going to be on your own and hold yourself accountable and work the program and it'll work as long as you work it, it'll, it'll work. And, and you'll have to hold yourself accountable. You'll have to uh, do your own analysis, your own summary, but if you get in trouble, their support is, is still available to you. Yeah, the, the autonomy and the independence is is definitely the goal, right? The goal is to give you autonomy and independence. Well, and there was, we talked about this for a second. It was uh, there was no hidden agenda. There was no right away. I've you know I've been around long enough that, and I've done enough introspective stuff that I learned to uh, understand people by learning to understand myself. And when I can look at the guy in the mirror, when I'm shaving in the morning and square off with him, when I'm looking at him in the morning, brushing my teeth and I can square off with him and, and look him in the eye. I can look anybody in the eye at once I can square off with me. And so I, when I hear the truth, it rings loud and clear. And what I was hearing on that pad podcast that I first heard you on, and I've heard ever since is the truth. And when I started right away to realize, well, there's no hook here. There's no hidden agenda. There's not something I got to buy later on or keep buying. The only way I can do this is uh, to saddle up somebody else's horse. And uh, I got to be able to live on my own, you know. And But you don't have to do it on your own. You will be on your own, but you will have the tools to do it on your own. And if you get confused, uh, all you got to do is send a text. All you got to do is send an email and say, hey, I'm confused about this. And here's the truth. Here's what's happening. I'm recently on my own, you might say. We we're, we go out to dinner a lot with friends and stuff. We have a really close friend of mine's a taxidermist. And he's, hey, let's go 
do this tonight, you know, and, and, um, and I have to learn more so now than I did before. Okay. What am I going to eat? Uh, it's a challenge and I'm going to figure it out. I, I am figuring it out because we're doing it more and more than we did over the last several months. And that's why I say I have to be able to look and say, and you've said this, you know, you're going to have to see what five ounces of meat looks like. You know, you're going to have to visualize what a cup of rice is. And in your case, and I'm beginning to realize how to do this, is how many, how many calories in that so that you can go out and enjoy yourself and not have it be all about the food and that other people realize, oh, he, he can't eat that or, oh, he's paying attention to that. I don't want them to know that I'm paying attention to anything. I want to enjoy the meal on a whole different level, not make my, my situation front and center at the table. Um, and that's what I've learned. And that's what I am learning. And, you know, knowing, okay, here's what a tablespoon of butter looks like. And it's a hundred calories and you have a, a budget on calories. So you got to stay within that budget. So you don't eat that, you know, you don't have the tortilla in my case the other night was you don't have those tortillas. You don't have the guacamole because you're having this, which before you just eat it all. In my case, I have this appetite, you know, of eat it all, you know, no off. I used to say, Oh, I don't have an off switch. Just eat it all. And then be miserable for the next, you know, go home and at midnight you're up because you've got indigestion. So that anyway, I, I get to rambling on, but, if there's somebody that's listening that is where you were struggling to understand nutrition, not really sure what to do, what's one tip that you would give them to start down that road of being able to make the progress that they want to be the person they want to be? Well, if they've, if they're at the threshold of Valley to peak nutrition, jump in because you can always quit. You know, you can always quit. And give yourself a chance, give yourself a chance at a new beginning, no matter what you've tried before. Uh, there's a certain, for me, there's a certain set of rules that I didn't really know about until I listened to that podcast from Backcountry Honey, and that you just, you know, I didn't know who you were, but what you, I'll have to say it again, what you were talking about. And then I listened to a couple other podcasts that you were on too. I searched those out. Um, what I kept hearing was the truth and the truth matters to me. It big time integrity really matters to me. And that's what I was picking up on. I didn't have all the pieces of your program, but I had enough to say, okay, jump in. And when you and I talked on the phone, it remember it was pretty frustrating because we were emailing back and forth, emailing back and forth that one day. It was very frustrating, not from the, program but it was just the technology for me to figure out how to use the computer and stuff and uh but i was determined i'd had a, you know I'm at that crossroads of pain of misery of no enthusiasm and i just didn't want to live the rest of my life that way and uh, i saw myself heading back down that same old track and if i didn't find something soon i was going to be 220 and 230 and I was just going to be a life of misery. So for me, uh, if you're here, whoever it might be that's at the threshold of Valley to Peak Nutrition, jump in. Because two weeks down the road, two months down the road, if it ain't for you, then it ain't for you. You've decided it's not for you. Just go ahead and back out and go find something else that is for you. But I think this is, a, for me, is the perfect program. And the fact that you're going to start doing podcasts are just an added, huge added plum to the whole support issue. So there's so much to take advantage of through Valley to Peak, uh, even after you've reached your goal weight and, and graduated, so to speak. Uh, you're graduating with knowledge and a still you still have a support system. You can still go back to that um, that place where that knowledge came from and um, get you back on track if you're off track and you don't have to get too far off. You know, you don't have to go way out in the wasteland and be unhappy again. 
Yeah, that's so so good knowing. I mean, whether it's nutrition or hunting or fitness or investing or anything, really having a thorough understanding of something, knowing the why, knowing the how is so vital to seeing long-term progress and long-term uh, changes. So Tom, truly my pleasure uh, to have you on, truly my pleasure to work with you, call you a friend. And I appreciate all that you do. Appreciate you coming on today. And um, if anybody has any questions or wants to reach out to you, do you want to leave an email form or anything? Um, <laughs> you, de- you definitely don't have to. Don't feel don't feel any pressure. I can always list it in the show notes if you get interested. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Thank you again, Tom, for coming on. I appreciate it. It was um, awesome to chat with you. Appreciate you sharing your story a little bit. And um, again, yeah, you can just a huge thanks to Tom for coming on the show and being a part of it and and sharing his wisdom with everyone. He did give me permission to share his email address. So you'll find that in the show notes. If you've got any questions for him about his own journey or just want to chat hunting or whatever, he's, he's just a, a great guy to sit down and chat with. So I'll include that in the show notes and until next week, if you need anything, you can get a hold of us at info at V2P nutrition.com. Check out one of the social media pages at V2P nutrition.com, or just get uh, as many resources as you'd like. And as would be handy to you at the website, which is V2P nutrition.com. We'll talk to you soon.